Have you ever seen a movie? Sorry to interrupt your beatboxing. But have you ever seen a movie where you just kind of side with the villain? The villains are always awesome. They're always awesome, always. but sometimes they're always right, too. Not always. Sometimes they're right as well. Sometimes they're pretty right. They're more right and more justified than the hero in some cases. Oh, yeah. And the hero is just dumb. Why you gotta be so dumb, hero? Why you gotta be so dumb? Hmm? Literally, the first one that comes to mind is... What's, what's his name? Uh, Edward Rooney. Yeah, that's you know? where you wrote. I know. I looked down at the last second <laughs> and saw it. Edward Rooney. Remind me who he is. You know, from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, he was the oh, principal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The man was just trying to do his job. He is the dean of students, and he's trying to get a student who is playing hooky into school. What? Might have gone a little too far. I By going that. to his house and, you know, yes. breaking in. But at the but same time... He was doing his job. Ferris Bueller's just a little shit. He's such a bad kid. So he was he was kind of right the whole time. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's kind of still a little mixed just because he does break into the house. However... One who is 100% the entire, right the entire time. Tim Kirk, uh, <laughs> Tim Curry's character in Home Alone 2. He was pretty right the whole time. For those of you who haven't seen Home Alone 2, Major Macaulay number. Culkin's character is lost in New York by himself. And this concierge finds that a little suspicious. Which, if I were a concierge and saw a kid and never saw this kid's parents and he had a credit card... But I never saw the the person who owned the credit card. I'd be a little suspicious too. Oh, yeah. So he's just doing his job of trying to uh, stop someone who who is committing identity theft. Really, you know, making sure that this kid doesn't run rampant. On he's trying to make sure he's not he's, he's, he's not a runaway. Because guess what? In this world, children do run away. He's just doing his job. And there's just also this one part where uh, Kevin, the, the little kid, makes him believe that there's a shooter. In the hotel. It's not Tim a... Curry was right in every way. He was way. right. And then in the end, how does he get paid? How does he get paid for doing the right thing? I forget the exact context. He's he's looking out for this woman in New York City, which is dangerous at night for it's, anyone walking home alone. It's pretty dangerous. And she slaps him in the face. Madam, there are hundreds of parasites out there, armed to the teeth. Do bundle up. It's awfully cold outside. Like, he's just trying to be a good guy. You know who the real villain of this movie is? The dad. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you why. The dad, the mom is always the one to realize that Kevin is home by himself or, or, or missing or whatever. The dad never notices. Then in Home Alone 2, when he when they finally get back and he finds out that Kevin has like an over $900 bill for room service, when they failed to make sure that he was on the flight with them, like yells at him, like... What's good parenting? At if all. The kid's lost in New York. How else is he going to eat? He know, he only knows room service. He's afraid to leave the house. Dad, you 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 done messed up and you need to take responsibility for your actions. I'm just going to go ahead and say Roy Batty from Blade Runner. Mm. The leader of the replicants that came back down to earth. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. All they wanted to do was just live longer. Not you no know, 4 years that they were Demanded to do. Yeah. Well, demanded. They were kind it's, of forced. It's just a simple uh, civil rights movement. Yeah. The guy was just trying to live. They never actually hurt anybody in the whole film. And if they did, it was mainly in... Out of self-defense. Self-defense. Yeah. So, like... The fact remains! The fact remains! That the, the, the dude was... Dude was cool. I mean, he was a little wacky. Or a little yeah. Roy Batty. Boo! Boo! But still. A little emo. But With still, the tears in the rain. The guy was... Yeah, that was a good line, no, let me tell you what. But he was right. He was right. And he just wanted to live, and he, you guys would he, not let he that would happen. Not let him. Just not. You know another one? No. Steve Hadley from The Cabin in the Woods. <laughs> oh for those of you who don't know, Steve Hadley was one half of the two main guys in the control room for The Cabin in the Woods. And, uh. This is gonna be a little bit of a spoiler, so. Spoiler! The entire system for the cabin in the woods 
is to appease the gods and make sure that they don't destroy the earth. Mm -hmm. Yes, in order to do so, they need to kill, I think it's like six or seven teenagers. The basic amount. Basic amount of teenagers. But seven teenagers, seven billion people. Come on. What do you, what would you guys do? And and who ends up ruining the whole thing? The teenagers. Oh, that's right. The teenagers kill everyone because they're like, if we don't have the right to live, does anyone have the right to live? It's not about having the right to live. It's about saving seven billion people. And you just killed them all. And you're all kind of assholes anyway, so. So. Just so Steve Hadley you. was right the entire time. And I'm glad that he got to see his merman. Before being Or mermaid, or whatever it is. Murdered by yeah. him. But yeah, Steve Hadley was right. Yeah, he was totally right. And you know who else was right? Who? Dr. Otto Octavius from Spider-Man 2. Doc Ock! Come on. This is supposed to be eight arms right here. I don't, I don't know. That dude, he was just trying to make his nuclear thingy to save the planet, you know. But it kind of backfired the first time. It didn't, it didn't. Who among us haven't failed the first time we tried something? Especially on nuclear items such as what he was creating. But. I know I have the first time I tried to make a nuke. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he didn't uh, succeed the first time trying it, but. His second time trying it, yes, he did do it in some pretty villainous ways, yeah. but he was still trying to save the world, if you yeah. think about it. Yeah. He was just doing it in a very bad way. Mm hmm Guy was just trying to save the, the world. Saving the world. You know who else was trying to save the world? Who? Or at least what remained of it. Wilfred from Snowpiercer. I think it's Wilfred. Think Wilf I, you wrote Wilfred. Wilfred. From Snow Pe Snowpiercer. Snow people. Snowpiercer. <laughs> Wilford from Snow Snowpiercer. Yeah. For yeah. those of you who haven't seen the movie, it's this dystopian future where pretty much everyone's dead except for these these uh, citizens that are on a train. Like, the entire human population is on this one really long train yep. that just keeps moving. It keeps moving. It doesn't and, stop. And the Ever. guy who invented it is the villain of the story. Because in order to maintain balance, they have to kill people every now and then because people get born, uh, people grow up, mm -hmm. and in order to keep the train going at such a high rate of speed and not fall apart is by maintaining weight balance. Mm -hmm. And all he's trying to do by doing this is keep the human race alive, which, yes, it's, it's, it's kind of a shitty situation. But at the same time, but he was doing there it. is no other choice. It's either do that and some people die, not do that and everyone dies. Like, it goes back to, what would you guys do? What would you do? The villains were right. The villains were right in Snowpiercer. And it's really just, that's, that's all, he's just trying to save the human race. He's from the X-Men movie. You know, the first one. Which one? Hmm. Magneto? You might know Senator Kelly. From the first X-Men, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. All that dude was trying to do was just register some mutants so people of the world just knew they were living next to a, a mutant. And I know what you're thinking. This sounds a lot like the Holocaust. But you gotta understand. Yeah. Jewish people in the Holocaust didn't have superpowers that could potentially hurt someone without leaving any evidence that it was that person. Or did they? And this isn't for, like, the good ones, obviously. Like, the Professor X's who wouldn't use it to harm anyone. Yeah. It's to keep track of the bad ones that would crush people's minds with their mind and leave no trace of what happened. It was just to protect people and let them know that, hey, this guy is here. Yeah. Like, that's Again, the thing. Again, it's a shitty situation, but it's the situation they're in and they need to fix it somehow. It's just somehow, some way. Somehow, some way. Yeah. Oh! Oh! I missed him! Conklin from the the Jason Bourne series. Well, from the first Jason Bourne, Bourne Identity. Conklin, for those of you who don't know, is the head of the department that Jason Bourne worked at before he lost his memory. But he doesn't know that Jason Bourne lost his memory. All that he knows is that an agent has gone rogue and has started failed a mission and has started attacking people. That is all he knows. Oh. So he's just trying to bring him back in to figure out the situation. And if that if bringing him in ends up in his death to him, it's fixing the entire situation. The thing the 
thing about these movies is that they're they're in these situations. We knew more than Conklin did in The Born Identity. Mm-hmm. That's why, to us, Conklin is the bad guy. But if you look at it in Conklin's view, where he doesn't know that Jason Bourne just has amnesia and just wants to be left alone. He's just trying to do his job. He's just trying to do his job. And and uh, to try to save American lives. Even though Jason Bourne poses no threat to American lives, he does not know that. So it's just really just a mi- big misunderstanding. What do we got over there? Sweet mother of God? Is that what I think it is? That looks like franchises that should have died a long time Franchises that should die! They should just stop that. That's what's over there. And behind this, over here? That's our review for uh, Jason Bourne, which we're about to go see. Yeah. And what's on our face right here? This giant box is Kubo! And and the the two two strings. strings. So yeah, check that out. That doesn't come out until August 19th. We got an early screening of it and uh, got to review the crap out of it. Yeah, so watch that. Find out what we thought. Right below us is Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You guys should go hit us up on there, as always, because we'll we'll message you back. We'll like like the comments that you post. We'll even tweet you. Comment down below what villains you think were right the entire time. Or you can just like and subscribe and then just make us happy. Because we're the villains, and that's the right thing to do. Just like and subscribe us. (laughs) For America.